Hey, what's up? It's Cherith, the Starry-Eyed Tarot Reader. Uh, I hope you're all staying warm if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, and I guess staying cool if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, <laughs> and enjoying the holidays. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the cold. Very, very happy that my new place has uh, a fireplace. <laughs> have a nice warm little fire going at night. It's great. Um, I'm planning some new videos. I'm trying to come up with some of my own topics. I'm not great at that, so fingers crossed. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, but today, I am doing a video response to Ramon at Moon Scarab called One Tarot Card. Um, basically, there are 10 questions, and for each question, you pick like one tarot card to represent whatever the question is. Um, I'm also going to be uh, incorporating something, another uh, YouTuber that I, uh, whose video I watched, uh, I think it was Derek John Thomas. I'll link both videos in the comments below. Um, but basically what Derek did in um, his response that I thought was really inspired was um, he shuffled the deck uh, at random and just like drew a card and went based off of whatever the deck gave him. Um, for that part of it, I'm going to be using this deck. This is the uh, traditional Korean tarot by Bana. Um, I've already like drawn the cards. I haven't looked at them. Um, so I'll be going through like the cards I picked, uh, chose on purpose, and then whatever uh, the deck gave me. I haven't worked with this deck yet. Um, this is going to be my deck of the year for next year. Um, but I wanted to use it for this because I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what will happen if like anything is going to sync up or what the, the, the deck that is going to give me just at random. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first question is, what is the most inspiring card to you? And for that, I chose the High Priestess from the Tarot of the Divine. Um, I was gifted this deck by a good friend of mine. Um, I absolutely love it. It's based on like myths and mythologies and folk folklore from around the world, uh, from different cultures, and I really love that. <laughs> Um, this particular card, this is Scheherazade, um, storyteller from A Thousand and One Nights. If you don't know that story, um, it's, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. Basically, the king, um, whatever king was, I don't know the king's name, um, but the king of where Scheherazade lived, his wife was unfaithful, so um, he had her sentenced to death, and then in order to cure like his broken heart married a new woman every day and basically killed him every morning and Scheherazade in order to um, avoid that fate um, every night as they, like, they were getting ready for bed she would ask permission to tell her younger sister a story and she would always leave the story on like kind of a cliffhanger <laughs> so the king would spare her life uh, and it worked. She wound up having like three sons. And when she reached the end of her stories, she was like, I have no more stories. And it didn't matter. He had fallen in love with her and wasn't going to kill her. So <laughs> I really, <laughs> it's an interesting story to me. And I think that having Scheherazade as the high priestess is absolutely inspired. Um, to have that, to have that represent the high priestess to have somebody who has like that depth of knowledge and imagination to be able to tell stories for a thousand and one nights I think is absolutely inspired um I <laughs> you know she she basically spins a story a continuing story to conquer death and I just I love that imagery I wish I had that sort of imagination, um, that ability, that depth of knowledge to to spin that sort of tale. Um, so I find that really inspiring in in this card. Uh, that depth, knowledge, the imagination, the perseverance is so beautiful to me. Um, I actually have this poster, the poster for this card, uh, from the artist Yoshi Yoshitani planning on hanging it up in my bedroom at some point. I gotta get a frame for it first. Um, but that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's how inspirational this, this character in this card is to me. 
Using her as the archetype for the High Priestess, I think is one of the best things I've ever seen. The High Priestess is one of the cards I identify with the most. Uh, and it was one of my soccer cards when I first started reading tarot. I was pulling it, like, all the time. So there's something about Scheherazade being an archetype in this deck, being an archetype for mystery and study of life that really speaks to me. And I've always loved learning and looking deeper into the mysteries surrounding us. So this is really just like my ultimate perfect card. And I love the colors in this. It is just absolutely stunning. Um, so let's see. Now we get to see what the traditional Korean tarot um, gave me. I haven't looked yet, so. Ooh, it gave me the King of Cups. I love this deck already. I haven't even worked with it, it's so gorgeous. Um, I could see, I could make the case <laughs> for the King of Cups being inspiring to me. Um, that stability of emotion definitely is inspiring the, the reaching that sort of conclusion, especially like in the Cups suit um, of having gone through you know, the ups and downs of life and, and reaching that that stability of being able to identify your emotions and, and work through them. I could definitely, that's inspiring to me. I'm not good at things like that, so. And there's a warmth to this card. I really like, especially in this deck, how it's been illustrated. Um, there's definitely like a comforting feeling to the card. Um, yeah, I find that inspiring. I strive to, uh, maybe not be entirely comforting, but I strive to be, you know, decent person. <laughs> All right, the second question is, which is the most distressing card to you? And for that, I chose the Four of Pentacles. This is the Light Visions deck. Um. This is a deck I have an interesting connection with. Uh, most of the tarot tubers I've seen have the Prisma Visions deck by the same um, artist. Apologies, there's a weird break there. Uh, my cat had to use the bathroom and I'm in the room where that is. <laughs> so anyway, as I was saying, most of the tarot tubers I've seen have the Prisma Visions, which is a deck by the same artist. It's, it's a lot more colorful. Prisma Visions, I actually have a mini version of it, reminds me um, kind of a, a Van Gogh-like painting. Um, but I have only seen like one or two other YouTube tarot tubers who have the light visions. And one of them was how I found out about this deck. I was watching a deck collection video by them and they showed the Prisma Visions and I was like, oh, that's interesting. It kind of looks like Van Gogh. And then they showed the light visions and I wish I had words to describe what it was. Other than that, it was like I lost my breath. It was like somebody punched me in the gut and I lost my breath. <laughs> um, like even, even without having it, even just seeing it, like I knew that I was gonna connect with this deck. Um, and I, I do, I love this deck. It's one of my favorites. Harder than hell to shuffle, but <laughs> I, I've learned to work with it, and the more I've worked with it, the easier it's gotten. Um, so I really love it. Uh, and I've, you know, I've thought about it, and I think maybe, maybe the reason I prefer the sepia tone has to do with my color blindness. The, the full color one has a tendency to feel too busy to me. It's hard for me to see the figures and see what's going on because of all of the different colors. And I can't see all of the colors, so I get distracted by thinking about what color is this? I can't tell. The sepia tone is easier for me because it's just, it's just one color. It's just like shades of one color. And that I think is easier on my eyes. Uh, all that being said, <laughs> this particular card it upsets me. <laughs> um, I struggle with the idea of, you know, being careful how tightly you hold on to something because that, you know, could cause you to lose it. Um, I work hard and I've worked hard to make sure that I'm stable and I know that I sometimes can get really uptight about 
about making sure I stay in a stable position in my life. Um, so whenever I draw this card, seeing that sort of message really bothers me. It doesn't feel like the deck is telling me that I'm being too careful and holding on too tightly. Or I don't, sorry, it does feel like that. And I don't like feeling that. Um, it definitely like brings up for me a lot of my insecurities and I really struggle with this card. And you can see, you know, how carefully this person is holding on. They've got their feet on the bottom pentacles. They've got the one in their, their hand they're holding close to their heart and the one they're balancing on their head. Um, you know, they're not letting go and they're staring straight at you, you know, daring you to try to, to take any of, of that or try to touch any of them. And it's just, it's just really hard for me to get that imagery in a reading, you know. I, I moved around a lot as a kid and I, I kind of, you know, there were moments where I got attached to the idea of like, I have to hold on to, to the things that, that I own. I have to make sure that I have something I identify as mine. Um, you know, and it's, it's hard for me. I struggle with that, <laughs> that, if that message, that imagery of like, don't hold on so tight. Um, I'm not good at letting go of <laughs> anything really. <laughs> um, but I'm working on it and I'm working like on my issues with this card. And I'm trying to also see positive aspects and learn from it, but it's definitely difficult for me. And so whenever I pull that card, I pulled it, um, I was doing a reading for my mom over the holidays and I pulled that card and my immediate reaction was, oh no, She's like, wait, no, I'm reading for my mom. I gotta have a different reaction. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's see what the dirt, I can talk. What the traditional Korean tarot gave me. Oh, that's interesting. It gave me the moon. This card doesn't upset me, but I do sometimes struggle with finding like the meaning of this card. Um, Cause I know like tr the traditional meaning can tend to be a little bit negative. It's like, you know, just looking at the surface and or there being like something hidden that you're not seeing and that sort of ne negative aspect of it. I, I struggle with that because I see a lot of beauty in the moon and I see a lot of beauty in, in, you know, just sort of, it's almost, it's almost peaceful. It's almost like a, a companion to the star, in my opinion, you know, there's the star where you've just gone through the tower and you're taking that moment of relaxation and introspection and then the moon kind of takes you deeper for me. So I do struggle with seeing it in a way that is like, there's something hidden you're not seeing, you're not paying attention. I don't know that it upsets me, but it sometimes confuses me. <laughs> All right, the next question is, what card is the most enigmatic to you? cleaning off my card. It's it's a uh, black deck so you get to see all of my fingerprints. Um, it's the Five of Swords and like the representative card I chose is from the Dark Days Tarot by I think Ren McMurdo. Apologize if that's wrong. Um, this version, this particular Five of Swords, I actually is probably the least enigmatic to me. I can get, you know, a message from that. It's like this person it's like a self-sabotage. They're like stabbing themselves in the back. Um, even then I still look at it and I'm like, is that what it means though? <laughs> um, yeah, I have issues with the five of swords and the seven of swords, honestly. I struggle with both of them and getting meanings from both of them. But the seven of swords, I can usually come up with something based on the surrounding cards or the artwork. The five of swords though, I. I have a tendency to just go blank um, just about every time. I actually did a reading for my brother over the holidays as well. And the Five of Swords is one of the cards I, I pulled and I just was like, nothing. I had nothing. Not even based on the imagery. I just was like, it's the Five of Swords. I don't know. <laughs> I had to go to the little white book to look it up. And not that that's a bad thing, but I want to be able to like, you know, get more than what's in the book and be able to draw my own story from it. And when I pull the Five of Swords cards, I just, I just can't. <laughs> it's really, really hard for me to get like anything. Um, you know, I've been studying and I have several books 
I can usually close my eyes and I can think of something like a keyword for some other card. You know, I can go through like all of the swords cards and I can think of something that will at least get me started. The five of swords comes up and I'm just, there's nothing. I, and, and it's getting, it's gotten to the point where it's like, I'm doing it to myself. It's psychological at this point because I pull it and I think, oh, it's the five of swords. I'm not going to come up with anything and then I don't come up with anything. So it's, it's a struggle for me. It's definitely the most enigmatic uh, card in tarot for me. <sighs> so, someday, someday I'll get it. Um, so let's see. Ooh, the traditional Korean gave me the eight of cups. Mm. I don't struggle to find meaning with this card. I would say it, it, it can be enigmatic because it's talking about, you know, moving for like, not moving forward, but like moving away from something onto something unknown. Um, one of my favorite Eight of Cups cards is from the Tarot of the Divine and it's Moses leaving Egypt uh, to wander in the desert. <laughs> So, you know, I can I can get something from that. Eight of Cups is like leaving comfort and safety for something unknown. That can be enigmatic, though. Um, there's definitely, because there's that element of unknown, there's an element of like, what are you doing? Why are you choosing to do this? I could see how that could be an enigmatic card. Gosh, this deck is gorgeous. All right. Next question. What card would you put in a thousand year time capsule for the future, for future humankind or whatever exists? <laughs> um, I would choose the 10 of pentacles from Eldritch Overload. i show off all the green. It's kind of hard to see, sorry. I'm trying a new technique with my camera so it, the focus is like different. Um, sorry, <laughs> I just got lost there for a second. Just about every video I watched in response to this tag chose one of the more positive cards from Tarot for this question. Not that the Ten of Pentacles isn't a positive card. Um, there were one or, two, one or two who chose something that was a little bit, I don't know what you would consider darker, a little bit more of like a warning. Um, I chose this particular card. Sorry, give me one second. I got it. My lighting changed and suddenly I'm looking like real washed out, so I apologize. Did I look terrible? Whatever. Um, we're just gonna go with it. <laughs> we're both that. Oh no. Um, oh yeah. I view this card as both, uh, a, both a hopeful card and as a bit of a warning. Uh, I try not to be too pessimistic about the future of humankind, but in all honesty, I don't know if the current form of humanity will be around in a thousand years. It might not be a bad thing. You know, who knows what will come next and not to say that there's not possibility of something different. <laughs> we don't know. Um, <laughs> in any case, if I were to put a card from Tarot into a time capsule, uh, for whatever form exists this sentient life in a thousand years, it would be it would be this it would be this card. And there's a couple reasons for that. I think this card encapsulates the best form of humanity. It's family sitting around a table, sharing a meal, sharing their lives, their hopes, their fears, dreams, anger, all of it. Um, and family is however you define family, you know, found family, blood family, whatever. <laughs> Um, but think of how many movies and TV shows have like a scene around the dinner table. You know, it's like a big scene. It's either people, you know, fighting a lot and getting up and leaving, or there's like a, uh, uh, I can't think of the word. <laughs> there's like a moment of healing, basically. Um, it's a really powerful image, image and there's a lot to dissect with that sort of imagery. Um, this version in particular, I think, carries a note of warning. You can see, like, everyone is dressed in their finest. They've got real fancy food. There's, like, oysters over here. 
they all got wine glasses. You got a couple older people here. Um, but there's something here, and it's probably dependent more on like what cards come with this, but there's something here that, that sometimes to me reads as like an overindulgence, a spoilation of, of what the dinner table, of what sitting around with your family and sharing a meal should be. You know, it, it, there's these people, a couple of them have some sort of alteration and it, it almost feels like there's something unnatural about their alteration, like they're potentially prolonging their life or, or changing their life in a way that could harm others. Um, so I like that for a time capsule. <laughs> I think that time capsules should show the best of us, but with a warning not to not to make the same mistakes. Uh, don't fall into the trap of thinking that the past, in this instance it would be us, is this perfect utopia and then trying to become that. Um, acknowledge that there was good and that there was beauty, but acknowledge the bad and pay attention to what we did wrong and, you know, don't do it. <laughs> Don't perpetuate the cycle ad nauseum, goddammit. Because that, yeah, apparently I'm an asshole. <laughs> it's okay. I'm even more of an asshole in one of the next questions. So let's see. Let's see what the traditional tarot gave me. Oh, <laughs> it gave me my favorite card. This is the card of Aquarius. This is my card. Oh, there we go. Focus. The star. Yeah, I, we can. <laughs> Okay, I can make the argument for putting that in a time capsule because that is, uh, number one, it's a beautiful card in every deck ever. <laughs> um, it's the star card, it's my card. Um, number two, it, it, it is more hopeful. It, it, there's a sense of peace with this card, a sense of like introspection. You know, you're sitting this this figure is letting the water fall from these these vases. She they're holding them like next to their head, so I imagine it the sound of the water flowing is very meditative and peaceful and relaxing. Um there's definitely like if I put that in a time capsule, I would hope that whatever sentient life is around then would see that as you know, a reminder to slow down, a reminder to to take the time to sit and meditate and get to know, like, <laughs> get to know your own mind. Because I think people forget to do that. You get all caught up in the hustle and bustle of life and they forget to nourish their inner world. Uh, all right, that was, that was a nice little like, don't do what we did. Oh, here's something really nice and peaceful and sweet. So <laughs> on to something, hopefully, hopefully more positive. <laughs> the next question is, if you were elected president of a newly created country, what card would you use as your flag? Um, well, I mean, first of all, if I were ever elected president, I would probably be impeached immediately because uh, equality for all, forget the fuck out. <laughs> Um, I would choose the Two of Wands from the Woven Path Tarot. I love this card so much. I mean, look how incredibly beautiful this is. I could just get lost in it. Um, but I would use it because the Two of Wands is all, all about looking forward to the future with hope and vision and planning for the best outcome, but standing you know, in safety and holding the world in your hands. Um, you can't stand in safety if you don't, you know, make sure where you're standing is safe and stable and <laughs> accessible. <laughs> so I think there's an element of ensuring the safety of your current circumstances, uh, which in this hypothetical would be your citizens. Uh, for me, there's also the visual of holding the world in your hand, in this case, this kind of looks like a crystal ball, but there's an element of that globe. It's kind of like a globe. Um, you have to remember <laughs> the world is fragile and it's our job, my responsibility to take care of it. 
Uh, so this card for me is the absolute ideal for this hypothetical of overseeing a new nation. It's a reminder to build that safe structure and take care of your current earth so that you can look forward and plan for the future and improve lives for everyone. It's also, I think, would be like a signal to other nations in this, other hypothetical nations in this situation, um, that, you know, my nation sees it as our responsibility to take care of the earth and build that stability so we can move forward and we will move forward uh, with, you know, positivity. <laughs> with something for everyone. Quality for all. <laughs> so I'm not an elected official. <laughs> Let's see what the traditional currying gave me. Oh, the Ten of Swords. That would be a fascinating flag for a new country. Um, I don't know that I would choose this. This feels like a bit... Hmm. Yeah, if you're just starting a new country, you don't really want a card that represents like an ending. But it could be a really beautiful way of being like, hey, you know, nothing lasts forever. And so it's our job while we're here, while we are it, and while we have the power to make things better. Um, you know, the Ten of Swords isn't always negative. There is something I find very peaceful um, about this particular card. And so you could use that for, for a flag for a new nation. <laughs> It's like, hey, you know, a reminder, we're not going to be here forever. It's our job to make things better for the next generation um, and to take care of them so that they don't suffer. Ta, made the case. <laughs> All right, we're on to the sixth question. <laughs> and I'm going to be an asshole again. Um, <laughs> the question is, if you were Earth's ambassador to an alien civilization, which one card would you use to represent humankind? Um, yeah, I'm going to be an asshole again. Um, everyone I watched responded to this question so sweetly. They chose like the best cards in tarot and they were all like, you know, hyping up humanity. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but um, I and I kind of cheated. Uh, so I, I first of all chose the, uh, the devil <laughs> from the Ostara tarot. Um, but I also chose a companion, which is the Lovers from the White Newman Tarot. Um, the reason that I did that, <laughs> hear me out, <laughs> I'm not saying humankind is the devil, <laughs> for the most part, um, but uh, I don't think we are paragons of virtue. We just, we just are people. <laughs> we can be both good and bad. We can't be the devil, we can't be paragons of virtue, but we're not one or the other. We're, we're, we're both. Um, which is why I would choose these two cards. Um, I'm sure the job of an ambassador is to represent the best of the civilization and gloss over the bad parts or ignore them. Um, but I don't see that as honest. This is telling you, this is why I'm not an elected official. <laughs> No one would ever appoint me ambassador because I'd be like, oh yeah, we kind of do suck sometimes. Yeah, but you know what? We're pretty good too. <laughs> no one would ever work with me. <laughs> um, but if I'm representing humanity to an alien civilization and I'm trying to explain to somebody with no context of humanity what humanity is, I'm going to represent it as it is. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. It's complicated, beautiful, grotesque, glorious. Like, humanity is amazing. <laughs> it's also terrible. <laughs> um, you know, I would use these cards to be like, yeah, humanity. We have a tendency to cage things we don't understand, you know. We go on the offensive. We, we overindulge, you know. <laughs> We see, we see our world as a curiosity instead of something to be taken care of. But, you know, we're also the lovers. We're warm and kind and, you know, we take care of the things around us. We try to. And there's beauty in both of those. But that, that's humanity. We're, we're, you know, we're all of these things. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, it, for me... <laughs> 
in this hypothetical situation where I'm somehow ambassador of Earth, first of all, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, second of all, I'm going to be honest, you know, alien civilizations, like, yeah, work with us. We're good allies. We're steadfast. But, you know, just be careful because uh, we're also kind of terrible. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see what the traditional Korean gave me. Ooh, the three of pentacles. That actually, I agree with that. I would also use that um, as a card to represent humanity if I were an ambassador for an alien civilization. I think this... Three of Pentacles, you know, represents working together to build something bigger than ourselves. Um, that's definitely humanity. Uh, the bigger than ourselves isn't always better. <laughs> but, you know, we do, when we work together, build something bigger than ourselves. Both beautiful and ugly. So I would definitely, yeah, the Three of Pentacles as the card to give to alien civilization to represent humanity. I like it. All right, so on to one of my favorite questions in this prompt, and that is what card represents someone you love? Well, that is the Queen of Swords from the Unfolding Path Tarot. Um, this <laughs> Queen of Swords, and particularly in the Unfolding Path, uh, for me, represents my mom. Um, and I usually see my mom in Queen of Swords cards. I have since I started reading tarot. Um, you know, my mom is a badass. <laughs> She's... Oh no. <laughs> I wrote this down so I wouldn't do this. <laughs> she's, you know, she's smart. She's strong. She's stable. She takes no bullshit. Yeah, I look at this card. This woman's sitting on the throne with a crown. She is she is in charge, she is stable, she is powerful, she is not to be fucked with, and I see my mom. I'm gonna move on because I've already started tearing up, so <laughs> we're just gonna go. Oh, uh, let's see what the traditional Korean gave me. Uh, I also have incense going, so like, I'm getting smoke in my eyes. Page of Pentacles, oh, okay. I almost chose this one, but I knew I was going to be using the traditional Korean to do this, so I didn't. But this, this is my niece, my oldest niece. Inquisitive, bright, like working, striving, building, like that, that's my oldest niece. She's going to be 11 next year. Oh my God. I'm going to start crying again. It's okay. I'll move on. <laughs> All right. Next question. Oh my God. <laughs> um, which card would you use as the cover of your autobiography? And I chose the Nine of Wands. There we go. From the Iris Tarot. Um, I, I, I have formed a connection with Nine of Wands cards. Thanks mostly to the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot and the Nine of Wands card there ahead. And I think I've talked about that one before. I have, because I have done uh, my deck collection video about the Eight Coins Tattoo Tarot. Um, pulling that card was an experience for me, so I kind of have a tendency to be drawn to Nine of Wands cards. This one I really like um, because there's a baby cheetah there, and I love cheetahs. And <laughs> got too close. You know, the Nine of Wands cards is all about it's all about perseverance and pushing forward and calling on reserve strength that you didn't know you had to become something more. It's about surviving, and it's about you know standing proud of where you are and how what you've what you fought through to get there. Um, I've always loved cheetahs. I was obsessed with cheetahs as a kid. And the more I've learned about them, the more I've become obsessed with them. What's not to love? They're the fastest land mammal. Uh, and they're also the most vulnerable. <laughs> Their babies are very vulnerable to predation. Uh, they have to have like support dogs because they're so nervous in, in zoos and stuff. Oh, I love cheetahs. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but you know, having, having this 
having this being the Nine of Wands is inspired. And I would choose this as the cover to my autobiography because, you know, I've been through some stuff. <laughs> been through some stuff. <laughs> And I'm still here and, you know, this is just a reminder to me to be proud of where I am, of how I fought to get there. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what the traditional Korean gave me. Aww! <laughs> the Six of Cups. How appropriate is that for an autobiography, though? Like, it's all about, you know, looking back with fondness to, to your childhood. It's all about that that like remembering who you were and looking at who you are now with kindness and beauty. That's so sweet. <laughs> I changed my answer. No, I don't. Oh, uh, maybe I do. <laughs> that That is beautiful for like cover of autobiography, cover of my autobiography. All right, second to last question. If you could upgrade one minor arcana card to major arcana status, major arcana status, which would it be and why? And I chose the Three of Pentacles, specifically from the Lubanko Tarot. Um, most of the other videos I watched, you know, they talked about how they struggled with this question because they see, you know, the major arcana structure the way it is on purpose, and the minor arcana shouldn't be moved. Um, I get that, and I don't disagree, but in my opinion, the Major Arcana is lacking <laughs> in one area, and that is community, cultivating community. Um, you know, there's the Lover's card, but that's really looked at as like a one-on-one -on -one thing, and most of it is, you know, most of the Major Arcana is the Fool's Journey. It's very solitary. It's one person going through and meeting these different people, these archetypes, and then continuing forward. There's not really ever a, a sense of like building a, a community around themselves. Um, it's, it's a solitary journey. <laughs> and I think that misses out on something that is important. Uh, something that I think a lot of people, especially in the modern age, also miss out on. And that is cultivating community and building community and looking out for each other. Um, and having that that structure and that stability. Um, sorry, I'm <laughs> I wrote like a little script and I read it, trying to figure out where I am on my page. <laughs> um, but you know, I think there's value in having community and having people who aren't necessarily family, but who are close to you and can support you and collaborate with you to you know build something bigger than yourselves. Apparently, building something bigger than yourself is important to me because <laughs> I've said that like five times now. <laughs> um, but you know, I think the major arcana misses out on that aspect of life and, and moving through life. You know, it's not always about just being by yourself and learning these lessons by yourself. It can be helpful to have a community around you and people around you who will be honest and who will help you see yourself and and build yourself up. Um, I would I would think if I were to put this in the major arcana, upgrade this to the major arcana status, um, I think I would put it after the tower card and before the star card. And the reason for that is a lot of times when you go through a tower mo moment and you know you you basically are starting at ground level, it can be really invaluable to have a community around you helping you build a solid foundation um, before you go into like the moment of the star card where you're you know you're a little bit isolated and you're in that sort of introspective meditative state to have something before that to help you really see yourself or help you see yourself through other people's eyes and build that solid foundation I think is would be very beautiful to have in the major arcana <laughs> so that's why i chose that um let's see what the traditional korean gave me oh the nine of pentacles okay i can see that there were a couple people that talked about the nine of pentacles being one that they would upgrade um to major arcana status i could see that 
Um, you know, there's there's some stuff in the Major Arcana that talks about like like building a stable foundation and and cultivating that sort of uh, abundance around you. But the Nine of Pentacles, I think, would be a better representation of that. I would probably put it like around the Chariot card if I were to upgrade this one to Major Arcana, because um, Chariot card is all about like movement and moving forward. I would probably put this either before or after to be like, don't don't forget to ground yourself and build up that abundance and make sure you nurture that. That was pretty good. <laughs> all right, last question. If you could mentor one of the pages, which would it be? I'll be honest, I struggled with this question. Uh, I'm a fairly good teacher. I have wound up being the main like trainer at my office. Um, I'm, I'm okay at it. <laughs> I think I'm good at it. Sometimes I forget that people don't always know what I know. <laughs> I have to remind myself of that, but um, I'm not a great mentor. I, I don't have kids. I'm not great with kids. I don't really understand kids. <laughs> I really don't, I get really awkward around them and um, it makes me all weird and just thinking about like mentoring a page, I got all weird and nervous. <laughs> so I went through like all the pages and went through like the meanings of them, picked the one I thought would make the most sense for me and that is the Page of Pentacles from the Smith Waite Centennial. Um, the way that I've learned this page is that it represents someone who has an intellectual curiosity. They have a thirst for hunger and a desire to learn and expand their worldview. Um, I think mentoring somebody like that would suit me just fine. <laughs> um, I am very much that person. I, I like to learn about different things. I definitely, you know, could imagine being with some young, younger person uh, sitting in a library just researching whatever the fuck comes to our minds. See, I can't be around kids. I swear too much. Anyway. <laughs> oh, let's see. All right, last card from the traditional Korean. Oh, well, I gotta go and see what other pages are there. We already know. <laughs> Page pendles, is it? So what was the next one? Ah. Oh no, it's, there's not gonna be one. <laughs> too far. Ah, Page of Swords. Oh, I mean, that could be interesting in that I think the Page of Swords is very much not me. Um, Page of Swords is very much like somebody who, you know, is always, they're very quick. They're going forward, you know, they're moving on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Everything is super exciting to them and they're just going a hundred miles per hour and that's not me. That could be interesting for Oh my gosh, I just described my brother. Oh no. Yeah, that could be interesting for me because it's somebody who's not me, very much opposite personality, very much the personality of my brother. <laughs> oh no, I can't mentor somebody who's like my brother. <laughs> I love you, brother, if you're watching this. <laughs> All right, so that was my video response to the tag one tarot card. Um, I really enjoyed this. I did do something a little different. I had like a script written, so I apologize. I keep looking down it and I'm not looking at the camera. I know because I'm facing me so I can make sure I was in frame. So I keep looking over there instead of at the actual camera. I apologize. It's, it's a work in progress. Slowly but surely I'll get better. I don't even know if this is picking up because I don't have my normal microphone. So fingers crossed that this worked. Otherwise I'll have to record it again. <laughs> And I'd be very upset. Anyway, <laughs> so I wrote down like what I wanted to say is kind of a little script to help me put my thoughts in order a little bit better. Um, hopefully this made a little bit more sense than some of my other uh, videos where I have a tendency to ramble and say the same thing like 15 times. Um, I really love this tag. I like this sort of thing that makes me, it's like a mental exercise, makes me think about cards and tarot in a different way. And, and I really like that. So I had a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you did too. Uh, thank you for hanging out and listening to me ramble and not look at the camera. <laughs> um, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Bye till next time.